Ed, I have a quick question for you. Um, one of the things that people may not know is that you're one of the co-producers of the Soul Train Awards. <laughs> yeah. So you've done that now for two years. Tell me what it's been like for you to now not be in front of the screen, but behind the scenes making things happen. I love not being in front of the camera sometimes because you get tired, you know. But I love not being in front of the camera because it allows that other place in my that that other part of my my creative side to be forced to think and uh being you know w along with tisha doing soul train awards it's just wonderful to kind of exercise that part of my creativity so when you know it's hard when you're on the stage and you're looking out but it's a whole different perspective when you're in the on the sidelines or if you're in the audience looking on and looking in and i really enjoy um executive i mean you know it's helping produce um soul train because we've watched soul train all our lives you know mm -hmm. and to be a part of that legacy and to be a part of that uh it's just i'm i'm, I'm honored I'm, ha I'm very happy i'm very happy that I had that Tisha and I had the opportunity because Soul Train for me and Tisha was, wow, we get to be ourselves. We're not Gina and Pam. We're finally ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're those two crazy little girls that, you know, we see each other on auditions and we got a big stage and we're telling people what to do. This is awesome. <laughs> but it allows us to, to give our input. And what we think people should see or what we think people enjoy. And it's not somebody else telling us what they think we should do. That's awesome. what I think about it. Hey, this is Al McGee. Uh, hey, again, McGee. From Florida. Quick question. Now, uh, on your TV series, do are you going to direct or have you already directed any episodes on that TV series yet? And do you want to be a director? Because I just heard you say, well, I like to get behind the camera now. You want to be a Director now? That's a good question, Alan. Yes. Ding, 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 ding. You get the grand prize. And yes, I do want to direct. Um, I think I'm ready to direct. I've had so many opportunities to direct. I had an opportunity to, to direct uh, uh, the star show. The uh, what's, my, what's the name of the show, y'all? On Stars. My show. Survivor's Remorse. Survivor's Remorse. I, had, I had an opportunity to direct on that. I didn't feel like I was ready. Mm -hmm. I had an opportunity to, I could have directed an episode of Everybody Hates Chris. Didn't feel I was ready. Um, hopefully, now that I am on the neighborhood, I think I will be ready. But you know, it's a different, you know, different ball game. CBS is a different ball game. But I think um, when the opportunity presents itself, I will, I will definitely be directing. Oh, great. I can't wait to see it. I'm so excited about you. You feel that side of me. Oh, That's yeah. Why. Yo, you know what I'm saying? You feel it. <laughs> I feel it. <laughs> hey, can I, can, I, can I jump in real So earlier, you were talking about how, you know, as an actor, you come in, you know your role, you play your role and all that, right? And now you're also talking about how you like the behind-the-scenes stuff, too. Mm -hmm. what, so as I'm binging through the neighborhood, and I'm loving it, by the way, I'm sitting here wondering, like, how much input were you able to actually put in? Because, you know, you on the show sitting here schooling some of these white folks like, hey, that ain't that ain't cool. That's not what's happening. So I'm just wondering, like, how much input do you actually get to stay? Or are you just more like, nope, I'm going to let the writers do their thing. I'm going to do my part. Or, hey, y'all, first of all, we don't talk like this. This ain't what's happening. Like, how does that work for you? Yeah, also there was one episode too where she was teaching her white neighbors that black people use washcloths. Uh -huh, white people uh -huh. don't use washcloths. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yes. What I love, I, I, I am so happy that I got the opportunity to be on CBS because people don't realize I've never been on a major network. I've never done a show on a major network. On Martin, Martin, when, I, when we did Martin, Martin was, Fox was an independent network. It was not a major network. When I did Everybody Hates Chris, it was on UPN. Yes. Yes. Major network that switched to CW. Um, so when I got the opportunity again to really get on a roll and on a piece of work, 
that's on a major network. I was like, and I get to work with Cedric the Entertainer. I'm like, because I've worked with everybody. Cedric and I have known each other forever. And I was like, Ced, you realize we oh, never yeah, worked with right. each other. Um, but he and Cedric the Entertainer and Jim Reynolds. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so I have two leaders at the helm that are very capable. So thank God that I'm on a new show, on a major network, and CBS, have, they really have given us a, a, a lot more leeway than I thought they would to really telling the truth and telling, being honest and being open. And now more than ever is this show needed. Because even with me and Beth, we like literally, we had scripts sometimes and we open the script and we'll do the table read and Beth Bears and Max Greenfield would mm-hmm. be like, what does that mean? But it'd be like a black joke. It'd be a black euphemism. Right. And we'll have to explain the joke to them. So that's the washcloth washcloth episode. It came from that. It Mm. came from something organic. We have the, what we discuss at the, at the black dining room table is a completely different discussion at the white (laughs) dining room table. You know what I'm saying? We, we talk, we talk differently amongst ourselves than we do when we're with our white cords. That's just the name. That's just how it is. But guess what? Now we have a show that's able to be a platform to bridge a gap. And that's what I love about the neighborhood because we're literally bridging gaps off camera. We're bridging gaps and understanding each other, learning each other, being sensitive to each other right. off camera. And we're, we're, we're hoping that that is being displayed within the show as well. Yeah, it Shana, is. question. Um, the episode with the, the, where you showed a Kate, the, your wig room. Uh-huh. How much of that did you have an input? Cause I was like, I just, I was like, there are a lot of women in America that are like a wig room. I need one of those. You know, it, had lights. it was like, your wigs had names and she was just like, what is this? I don't know, but I think I want it. Yeah, because you got to think, we grew up, I think everybody black mama had different wigs. You knew. Like, when my mama put on this wig, oh, yeah, we're going to church. Or if she put on this wig, we going shopping. Or if put on this, come on. Like, it's been a part. Black women in our hair, We've gone through every, like so many metamorphoses. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we have gone through so much with our hair. Like even when Chris thought about making, uh, 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 what's that movie he made? Uh, good, Nat- hair. Oh, good, good hair. Good, good hair. hair. Good hair. I remember when it was a thought in Chris's brain. He was like, yeah, that's why I wore a lot of wigs on the show, on Everybody Hates Chris. Every time you saw me, I had a different wig. There's a reason for it. Black women in our hair, a very sensitive subject. I love that I, uh, 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 Ayana Presley, she went bald because of her psoriasis. Good for her. We go through a lot of changes. So I told them, I said, look, black women, we like different looks. We like, I wake up and I wake up according to what wig I got I'm gonna wear, what weave I'm gonna wear, what ponytail I'm gonna wear. Um, and there's nothing uh, uh, to be ashamed about. Oh, okay. I was like, okay, hey, so we're going to really display it. We're going to really, like, you know, make it happen. So that was part of my ca- Tina character that I just love wigs and I wore wigs because that's what Black women do. We have different looks. We like different yeah. looks. Amen. Tashina, you for guys, your role we're going to, uh, Miss Arnold only uh, was able to give us about 45 minutes and We've already exceeded that, so no, we're, we're good. Let's keep going. We're good. We're good, Gail. I got you. Go ahead. Keep going. What? Sheena, yes, I'm about. listening. Do you ever, on the neighborhood, on the set of the neighborhood, you were talking about how the differences are between, you know, being in a white household and a black household and the way we speak. Do you ever find yourself on set having a code switch? Mm. Code switch. What does that mean? Tell me what that means. Which means... Black people, we speak one way when we're in front of pilgrims as opposed uh-huh. to the way we speak when we're front of, in front of our own. Cedric so we, is so we all gotta, yeah. with our own, and then we got a language when, you know, when we don't want white people to know what we're talking about, you know? What I'm oh, okay. Let me tell you what I have on the show, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let y'all know, share a little uh, 
private thing that we do on our set. I don't let white people huddle. <laughs> I don't allow white people huddle. Okay. What y'all talking about? What y'all talking okay. about? <laughs> this is, this is, and let, let, me, let me explain. You know, I'm a jokester. I love having fun. And I'm just a, I'm a people person. And we have a very mixed crew. We got a lot of women on our team. We got a lot of men on our team. We got a little bit of everybody that makes the neighborhood happen. And I noticed, and just even as a little girl coming up in show business, I knew when white people huddled, there was going to be a major change or something was happening. Something was going to change and I had to be ready for whatever that change was. Well, I'm grown now. I'm a mother. I'm a grown ass woman. I'm a, I, I would like to say I'm a, a thespian now. I need to know what the hell is going on. So I joined them. Whenever I see them huddling, I'm like, oh, 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 ain't no black people here. I got a white, there's a white people huddle. Let me come over here because shit happens when white people huddle. Mm. Changes happen. Yeah. But, and it could be little change or it could be a lot of change, but we got to be ready for change. And it's my own little ongoing joke. So now I have other people telling me on the set, they're like, oh, Tashina, there's a white people huddle over there in the corner. <laughs> And they let, it's hysterical. But what it does, it allows us to realize what we do. And a lot of times people don't consider us. I have always, I, I, being in show business and being a black female in show business that's been able to survive show business all her life, I had to think about what has been, uh, allowed, what has allowed me to survive all these years. So outside of my grandmother's prayer, and outside of, you know, my family's prayer and having a good, strong grounding and just soldiers around me and holding me up when I can't hold myself up. Yeah. You got to pay attention to things. Mm. I was a little girl. I would always be the only, the youngest person in every cast that I've been in. So if I was on my wrong mark and we're on stage and we're performing and the show is going on, if I'm on the wrong mark, guess what? I'm being kicked out of my place. You're in the wrong place, you can be kicked out of, out of the way. You're in the wrong place, you're gonna get, you gonna, you gonna, somebody gonna kick you with a foot or something. Cause if you, you have to be in the right place at the right time, but there are times where you gotta be in the right place at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. And I like to know what's going on. I like to know what's going on so that I can effectively do my job. I ain't mad at you, thank you. Thank you Tashina, very much. Uh, I, I have a question. Um, last last question. Uh, I'm sorry. Kill yourself. I haven't asked the question yet. <laughs> I haven't asked the question yet. So, oh, so I love, I, I want to say I love Martin, first of all, still watch it. So your character for Clover, you pretty good with that gun. So did you have to have some special training or you did a little something, something we didn't know about before? <laughs> I'm really good. I'm a good shoot. I've been shooting oh. a long time. Yeah, I'm not a part of the NRA, NRA, but I used to go skeet shooting. My dad is a retired police officer, so I've been around guns all my life. So I'm not afraid of guns, but I respect guns. Okay. And um, I'm actually going to take my daughter to the gun range. I think she's ready. She wants, you know, I taught her how to drive, and now I'm going to teach, teach her how to shoot a gun. That's it's great. Nothing to be ashamed of. This is wild, wild west. Listen, this is how America was birthed. Like, I, yeah. there, I have no problem with it. But guns are here, so now we have to teach them how to use it. Mm. Well, you did great in the movie, so hey. We can Thank you. But they did, they did, they did show me because I have weak hands. I had a company called China Moon Rags, and I would make a lot of right. scarves just by my hands. So I got carpal tunnel. Like I just, my hands were really messed up. And that gun that they had, I think it was a, a what was that? A snub nose thirty eight, I think. Yeah, that's but what it looked like. The, the the trigger was really hard to pull right. back. So. Uh, hopefully, you know, I was able to do it, but I had to practice a few times before we shot that, that scene. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, I count on you and I thank y'all for taking the time with me today. I appreciate it. We appreciate it. it. We thank love you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gil. Wait. Thank you, dog. Talk to you soon. Thank Y'all you. be blessed. Be blessed. Okay, you too. Bye-bye. I love you. Bye. How do I turn this damn thing off? Okay, how do I do this? Uh,